Shalom, brothers and sisters. It's all honor, glory, and praise goes to the Most High Yahweh in the name of Yahweh HaMashiach. Welcome to another video, brothers and sisters. I'm Brother Jedaniah. And today's topic is we're going to talk about our inner circle and outer circle. Brothers and sisters, whether you know it or not, you have, are supposed to have, an inner circle and an outer circle. What do I mean by that? Those are people that are close to you or that you see on a regular basis and you put them into some type of category in your life. You have an inner circle of family and friends and even neighbors that you deal with on a regular basis. Then you have an outer circle. These are the ones that can be your family, but they're not really your friends. They're associates, but they don't really cut for you too much or they even hate you or uh, look down on you or something like that. Uh, this is your outer circle. Now this is going to help you in your walk today and identify certain people in your life. But the first place where to start is in your inner circle, there's an A, a B, and a C in your inner circle. And in your outer circle, there's an E, um, D, and F, right? And certain people is going to go in those categories. Now, your A is your husband or your wife. If you're married, your A is your husband or wife. If you're not married, then the A is you. And then your B, if you're married, is your your uh, your parents or the parents of your spouse. If they like you, if they like the other spouse, if they're getting along with you, they're in that B category, along with your children and your close family members that you see all the time, your BFFs, that's your best friends. They're, they're, they're around you all the time. That's your B category. But no one else is going to be in that A category except for your wife. Or your husband. If you're married. Because now y'all are one flesh. And you, you both are an A. And uh, your C category is going to be those cousins. That didn't quite make the B cut. But you see them, you can talk with them every now and then. Y'all can have a pretty much a good time, even if by yourselves or something like that. And that's your your BFS friends, whom you get along with uh, as well. And co-workers would fit in that uh, C category as well that you get along with. Because you're around them all the time. So you got this inner circle who you hang with, who you share things with, who you talk with, who you pray with, who you give to, who you help when they fall down, you know, you're in a circle. But your A, if you're married, has to be your husband and wife. If that's not the case, if your husband is treating you like a C and everybody else in the B category is above them, above her or him, y'all need to work that out. Get your A fixed. Get your A category fixed. Focus on the husband and wife relationship till it is till you're complete. Till you decide, okay, we're there. We're out of eye. We're we're be, we're BFS. We're friends. We're you know we're where we want to be. That A category must be fixed first, even before the children. No, children don't come before you. That's just a world saying. Ain't the way the Most High designed this thing. He didn't say once you get married and you have children, now those children is above you and your wife. I don't. I can't really know what. That's a world thing. Get it out of your head. Strike it out. It's you and the wife before even the children. Because y'all want flesh now. You're one. You're not two separate people. You're one flesh. 
operating in, in the one capacity. If you don't have that, you need to fix it. And once you're done with that, your children, some of your children may eventually go into the C category, you know, depending on how um, rebellious they are against you and how much they turn against you. Some of them might even slide to an E. I meant D. Man, I'm tripping with the, uh, the letters, huh? I'm glad y'all let me make it on that. They'll slip down. <laughs> They'll slip down to the D category. And some of them might even get to the F. I mean, to the E category. This is where they really don't like their parents. They talk bad about them on their back. They show up just enough respect to get by. But then you got some of your children that just F, they can't stand your guts. They they show it. And they ain't got no respect for you at all. And they they care less if you're in their life or not. So yes, you your children can even slide over down that scale. And that's a hard thing right there. But let's go back up to your inner circle. Your inner circle is the ones you're supposed to be focused on. These are the ones that shows you compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. They bear with you. They, they're they flexible with you, you know, according to what you're going through. Or if you're not going through that, you know, they enjoy the time with you. They, they, they sit with you, talk with you. Yeah. They're just there. They see you working on a car or something. Like, they'll stop. They'll come and help you out. You know, whatever. you call them up, hey, I need some help, and they're there. Your inner circle is very important in these last days, especially if they're Hebrews. Now, if they're not Hebrews, and they're willing to accept you for who you are, uh, but they're not changing, you could put them in that C category. The C category, whenever you see them, you talk with them, you know, but I'm not talking about being BFFs with them. Even if they was your BFF. But if you went a certain time, certain death, and you see your BFF is rebelling and starting to turn on you and all these other things, slide them in that C category for a time. And if they get real out of land, they don't even want to come around and see you no more, and they don't accept your calls. They get back you get back with you in the, uh, with the attitude. Slide them on down to the D category. Put them out of your into your outer circle, and start filling your inner circle with like-minded Hebrews. Now, what if your spouse is um, they don't accept the truth, and they're not willing to convert? and follow the most high what do you do about that well you continue on in the faith and you keep praying and fasting for you and your your spouse together and after a point of time the most high will let you know what to do from that point forward he knows but you must give it the proper time that is need you know the most high knows how much time you should give it you know you may go through some trials, tribulations, and some suffering during the time. Meanwhile, but it's going to come a time when the Most High will let you know inwardly that you separate yourself from this heathen man or your husband or heathen woman that you married. They're, they don't want to hear them. They don't want to conform. You, you done gave it. All that the Most High has walked you through, giving it to them. So you really have to be connected with the Most High in making that decision, because there is children. There might be children involved in your B's and your C category, and you want to keep that good. You want to long suffer a little bit to make sure the family stays a family. Do all that you can, but it's come. It comes. It's going to come a point in time when uh, that particular spouse is not going to be connected to you at all. And you're going to slide down that scale to C or maybe even D. All of a sudden, you're going to be in the outer circle on that spouse's 
a a chart, you know what I mean? And they gonna be lifting up everybody else but you. And you know, that's not right, you know. Now only the most high can tell you without a shadow of a doubt who's who around you. He's going to make everything plain. He's going to make it known. He's going to reveal all these things for you if you let him. And if you keep yourself clear and stay focused on the word and don't let all these people around you who it's been showing that they don't cut for your new found faith. Don't let them get to you. You keep the faith. You keep the commandments. You guard it. You guard it with everything you got. This is our knowledge. This is our wisdom. This is our heritage. This is our culture that we're protecting. The most I told us to guard these things. Zion. So now we have to build even new friends. And that's kind of a process I'm going through right now. You know, I'm building new friends on here and offline, you know. And I'm, I'm trying to stay centered on Hebrews. And if any grafted in Gentile comes into the picture, they they more than welcome to grab a hold of my skirt. Just as the scriptures say, you know, I'm not going to let somebody else tell me, hey, a Gentile cannot be grafted in and grab a hold of my skirt when the scriptures say so. Who else is going to come in the kingdom and, and, and serve us in the kingdom if, if they can't make it in there? What the world? I don't even understand Zion sometimes. They're just not reading the scriptures. And not understand. They're not even, not even asking the most high for understanding. Or for clear eyes. In certain subjects. But they're quick to blast everyone. So you got to watch your inner circles. Zion. But you know, your A, your B, and the C. Is the ones you, you're going to mainly deal with all the time. This is Luke 31. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And if those people that's in your circle, they're going to do this. They're going to do unto you as they will want done unto themselves, right? And you're going to do unto them as you will want done unto yourselves. Y'all going to have that mutual bond, that mutual love. And, and it's going to reciprocate between all of you. The A, the B, and the C. You know, the C gets some love too. It's not just as much as the B category. You got Proverbs, uh, I got Proverbs 18 to 24 here. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. This this goes into the D, the E, and the F, the outer circle. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. This is your inner circle. This is your outer circle right here. They're going to constantly bring destruction, the world, and death into your life. Constantly. Even their conversation is foul, is wicked. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Proverbs 22, 24 through 25. Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered. Or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. See that? You are who you hang around. Those things will rub off on you. Believe that, Zion. I've experienced that. Uh, even to this day, you know, certain people come around you and certain things will just rub off. All of a sudden, things that you done already put away, hey, how, where did that come from? I got to uh -uh, get somewhere. You know what I'm saying? This Colossians 3, 12 to 14. Therefore, as Yah's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, good, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have agreements against someone. Are y'all doing this in your inner circle? Are you forgiving your inner circle? Quickly settle the matter before before you close your eyes at night. You don't even know if you're going to wake up in the morning. Forgive as Yahweh forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love with, which binds them all together in perfect unity. That's right. Love is the number one binder in your inner circle. The outer circle, there's nothing but problems. 
the switch and just uh, shaking and quaking and, and, and breaking apart and tearing down. It's, that's your, your outer circle. You want to keep them as far away from you as possible. And just when you see them, y'all know how you do when you see just someone you just see and you just say hi or whatever. And they may even snarl at you or something. And you just keep it moving. You ain't got to sit there and talk with them. John 15, 12 through 15. My commandment is this. Love each other as I love you. Greater has greater love has no one than this. To lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Y'all see that part? You got any friends that just always rebelling? You you ask them for help, and all of a sudden they they don't want to they don't want to take no commandments from you. They're starting to take over your project, and ordering you around, telling you how to do this. Hey, get this, get that, or do that. You don't want to call them. This is your outer circle. If you talk with them and that they do not change, put them in your outer circle. You don't have to keep yourself stressed out like that. Even if they are old friend or whatever the case may be. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. Hallelujah to this one. Hallelujah. I am thankful to be reminded of this. Even right now. So I learned so much from Hamashiach as a friend. He called me a friend. This is personal side. Hallelujah. Proverbs 70, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. That's your inner circle. When you got that close friend, best friend, BFF, your husband, your wife, and your B category, it's always going to be there for you in times of adversity. Whether it be your children, whether it be your mother, your father, Stepmother, stepfather, whoever they are in, in the B category, they're going to always be there. In some of the C categories as well, even though they don't come around as much. But when you reach out to them in your time of adversity, they will be there for you in a circle. Just as some of you were there for me recently, I could have had my lights off right now. I could have been off. And though I don't know you, you came through for me. In my time of adversity, you're in the inner circle. Y'all know what I'm saying? Get your inner circle together. Focus on your inner circle. Push your outer circle as far as you can away from you. But you got to identify who's who. Now, even um, your A category, who is your wife or your husband, could, could be in that outer circle as well. And when you get to that point, when they, you know, either got you in the outer circle or they themselves move into the outer circle, then it's time to uh, really fast and pray and get these answers from on high on what to do with this particular marriage. Because you know the Most High hates divorce. He hates breaking apart. He wants you to do all that you can. If you can't do that, then between you and the Most High, y'all, you got to make a decision. Because they're going to be a thorn in your side. They're going to be tearing you down. They're going to be constantly at you until you break. Or they're going to at least try to break you. And they're going to put more upon you than, well, Most High will not put more upon you than you can bear. But they're going to try. Some of you may be going through that right now. You need to focus on your inner circle. And do whatever you can to fix the A category with your, your significant other, your spouse, husband or wife. And for a time, I don't know how long that is. Only you and the most are going to know. Because he knows the future. He knows what that person in your life is going to do or don't do. He knows that. And he's going to share that with you. 
You have to trust and hear the voice of the Most High. Learn how to hear it. God lead and guide you. I know it's tough sometimes because my flesh gets in the way sometimes of uh, hearing the Most High's voice. So we have to quiet down our mind and focus and bring these issues before the Most High and wait and be patient and know that He's going to solve it. But you don't know when. Be next week, it might be next year. No matter what the problem is in your inner circle, you want your inner circle as fixed as possible. Anyone you're angry at that's in your inner circle, go ahead and set that gift down before the altar and go restore them that um, relationship and a unity of love and the spirit of love. Then, then come back and get that gift, that spiritual gift. And Put it on that spiritual altar on the inside of you and let it be a sweet savior for the most high. To, you know what I'm saying, the spiritual gifts, uh, using the spiritual gifts and the fruits of the spirit. These are all spiritual sacrifices on the altar of the most high in your inner temple. That's a sweet savor to the most high when you do these things. So, um, Zion, y'all let me know um, if there's something that could be added to what I'm saying here in the inner circle. And if there's something I'm missing that could be added to the outer circle. Let me know in the comment section below. Because I would like to do this lesson again with a little bit more ammo from you and your thoughts. You know, I can add to it. And I'm going to do like a um, document and add that to my website as well. About the inner and outer circle. This very same subject. I'm going to do a document. I'm going to include these scriptures and whatever y'all come up with in the inner and outer circle that I didn't cover. Uh, everything you put out on my Even scriptures that could be added to this here as well. That will help in the next time I do this video and put together the uh, chart. So, hallelujah. I want to thank y'all for your prayers and your time. Uh, I'm in that learning phase of learning my job, and it, it is tough, but I'm going to get through. Hallelujah. Y'all keep praying for me and this job that, it, you know, that I get through it. Once it ends, I'm going to switch over to something more permanent. That's my next goal with the company, to find something permanent. Because this particular job I'm going to end, and uh, that's going to be, it's a seasonal job. So, it's going to end uh, toward the end of the month of April. And I want y'all to go ahead and put in a prayer for me. To have, to have that next job prepared and ready for me. Just send up that prayer to the Most High for me on it. However which way you want to uh, put that prayer up for me. But you know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something more permanent where I can go through the training, learn the job, and just stay on that job and just get better and better get a good workflow and to let it free flow after that, you know what I mean? That's my next stage. And it's a work at home job, you know? Uh, I'm going to start putting out work at home jobs like this on my Hebrew Alternative channel. So y'all going to want to go over there and subscribe. And once I get into this workflow, I'll, I'll be doing more with uh, the Hebrew Alternative. For right now, I have to focus on this. And, uh, you know, I was trying to get Yah Almighty Ministries cranked up. And I start thinking about that. Y'all know I got to add some things at the end for those who make it this far. Uh, I was thinking, man, did I jump the gun on that? Is that a little bit too much for me right now? Should I just stick with Son of the Most High channel and just post here? 
did, am I the one who did this? Or was I led by the most high? I'm thinking it was me. <laughs> I think I'm the one who chose that, not the most high, y'all. So I got to pray about it because I'm not certain if I was supposed to do that, but I did want to create the website uh, for information. So I might just keep Son of Moses channel and change the name over there to Yah Almighty Ministries. Uh, Y'all let me know. Or some, maybe even just Yah Almighty and just go from there. Uh, Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. I might be putting too much on my plate. You know what I mean? And it's me who did it, not the most side. Uh, so let me know something, Zion. With that, I'm going to say shalom. Thank you for listening. I appreciate all your prayers and all your gifts that you have given. Hallelujah. Thank you. For, man, if y'all didn't come through for me. Woo! Shalom.